Hey everyone. So I figured for the second part of today's videos, um, or of this morning's walk, for the second part of Pretty Bird's morning walk, I figured we'd do kind of like a little bit of a Q&A, and I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that I am asked the most about Pretty Bird. So, um, one of the questions I am asked a lot is whether or not Pretty Bird is a Canada Goose. Now, if you pay close attention to her patch, you will actually see that her patch is very large, the white patch right here. Also, she has many polka dots all over her neck, including the back. Her neck is not necessarily black. It's more like a very deep brown. And also, she does not have black feet. There's also other details about her plumage. Um, that go more into like specific little details that make her a very obvious hybrid to anybody who's very familiar with Canada geese. Um, basically, we don't know for sure what kind of goose Pretty Bird is. Um, we know she's a hybrid and we know we got her from a little homestead. Now, we don't know for sure what her hybrid is made of, like what her parents were. Um, but our best guess, and also the guess of, uh, the guess of some uh, professionals, of, of some breeders um, who have seen pictures of her, who have asked for their opinion, have agreed that she is likely a mixture between a Canada goose and a brown or gray Chinese goose. I forgot if they're called brown Chinese geese or gray Chinese geese. But um, that is likely her uh, mixture of a hybrid. Um, the thing about hybrids is that no two hybrids will look exactly alike. So you kind of go off the features, and if you want to know for sure, you do a DNA test, which I figured I'll probably do eventually in the future, but as of right now, I simply just don't have the money for it. And um, I don't um, see why it's that important, because, well, I know she's a hybrid, and I mean, most of all, we love her, so she could be any kind of breed goose, we'd still love her for who she is. Um, hi, honey. Yeah. Mama loves you. Mama loves you. Anyways, uh, another question I'm asked a lot is whether or not I found Pretty Bird somewhere if I rescued her or if I got her from the wild or if I found her at some lake. No, I did not. That is highly illegal. To take an animal from the wild and keep them as a pet is illegal. It is a federal offense. Don't do it, okay? Now, Helping an animal from the wild is another story. It's a lot more complicated. Um, what you want to do is you want to get in contact with somebody who has a permit or a license to do so. Um, but in general, even if um, you get it wrong when you're helping an animal, um, most of the time, uh, from, from what I've been told by wardens, they're not going to be too strict about it. Um, because they know your intentions. Um, but the law itself is that you should be contacting Fish and Games or Rehabilitator, um, somebody who is trained and has a license to help the animals. Um, hi, honey. What do you see? Pretty Bird sees something. Anyways, where we got Pretty Bird from is actually um, from, like I said before, from a homestead. And um, actually, she was an egg at a yard sale, so we we had no idea what breed she was going to be. We actually was were under the assumption that the eggs were infertile. My kids had a uh, day were selling the eggs for food. My kids begged me to give it a try um, to incubate them at the house. I agreed to do so because we had raised ducks and uh, quails before that we had been homed with uh, really nice, beautiful farms and homesteads um, as homeschool projects. So Pretty Bird basically started out as a homeschool project. Um, we did not expect anything to happen, but um, because the um, homestead, homesteaders, um, this older couple, they actually told us that their geese were not breeding yet. Um, and, uh, well, as you guys can see, at least one of those eggs was fertile, and out of that big bucket of eggs, I got the right one. My Pretty Bird? Yeah, would have been a shame if you ended up an omelet. Yeah, I know. Mama doesn't like to think about that.
your mama's baby. Anyways, another ah! question. <gasps> what? What? You got an answer to? What do you want to tell him? Another thing <laughs> that I'm asked a lot is um, basically what it's like to own a pet goose. And it's a question that's really hard to answer because much like most pets, every animal is very unique. And most pets have been, at least for many, many, many years, have been bred to be pets. So certain bad traits have been bred out of them, their instincts have been diminished, and they have become more docile and more likely to listen to the human and be tame. Whereas geese, though they have been bred for human use, they've mostly been bred to become farm geese, not pet geese. Um, and uh, the only other common thing that a goose is usually used for is actually as a guard goose on a farm or around a house, which um, protects smaller animals around the area because geese are insanely vigilant and very protective of the ones that they love. So. As you can see, Pretty Bird is constantly paying attention to everything around us at all times. And she expects me to do the same, which is why you see me looking around. I've started doing that ever since I've had her as a little gosling. Because it was my responsibility to keep her safe from predatory birds and other predators. Because, well, we are in Arizona and there are hawks and eagles out here. And owls and all kinds of animals. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so owning a pet goose, there is a variety of ways this can go. I mean, you guys can check out um, Pet Goose George. Uh, you'll see one version of how a pet goose may turn out. Um, you have Pretty Bird, the pet goose right over here. This is one, and another version a pet goose could turn out. There is, I believe, a couple of videos of a few people that have pet geese on YouTube. Um, most of those channels are very small, um, other than Pet Goose George. And... Um, yeah, you can tell that most of the geese are very unique one from each other. So my best advice if you're interested in getting a pet goose is do your research. Make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. This is a lifetime commitment. I mean, a goose like this can live anywhere from like 20 to 40 years. Um, one of the oldest Canada geese they actually found was like in, in the mid-late 40s. So if Pretty Bird stays healthy, which I pray she does, and... Um, and nothing happens, which I pray it doesn't, then we will end up having Pretty Bird for a very, very long time. Which is the plan. Right, Pretty Bird? Right? Yeah. He's a good bird. Anyways, it's kind of like getting a parrot. You want to make sure that you're ready to do so, because uh, much like a parrot having, which is like having a toddler for the rest of your life, that's what having a goose is. Geese, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to be able to potty train a goose. Okay, so um, you've got to, hey, no nibbling my face, no grooming my face. She was not biting me, she's trying to groom my face. Anyways, 99% um, of the time, you will not be able to potty train a goose. Okay, a goose is not going to hold their pee or poop until they go outside. Um, they're not going to go in a litter. So they're just going to let it come whenever it goes, you know, like they just let it go out whenever it's, you know, needs to go out. And if you want your pet goose to be inside, which is, you know, what a pet goose basically is, an animal that lives inside is what a pet is, um, then uh, you're going to have to choose between either changing your goose's diaper or cleaning up after your goose. Now, since I have tile in 99% of my home, I just clean up after her. And um, she has an area for herself where I can keep her somewhat confined or controlled about her access where she can go and um, it minimizes like the amount of work, you know what I mean, like, or the amount of like mines that she leaves laying around, right? Mm-hmm. And you definitely want to pay attention to these animals because much like parrots do, they chew on a lot, they chew on everything and they're very curious and um, they're extremely smart too. There's actually a really old video I found from like 1920 of a gentleman who was training his goose to walk between his legs. Like he would take a step and the goose would go in between his legs. It was pretty cute. Um, but yeah. Another question I come across a lot is uh, how do you tame a goose? Now, Pretty Bird wasn't necessary. What are you doing? What? Kisses? 
Mama have kisses? You giving Mama kisses? You give me kisses. Good bird. Hmm? Yes, you are. You're a good. All right. So, how do you tame a goose? You tame a goose by hand raising them. One way to do that is get yourself. Ah, no, you don't get to eat the bone. Did you give them kisses? Is that what you did? Did you give them kisses too? Hmm? Okay. So one of the ways that you can tame a bed goose is to basically get it as a tiny little gosling and then raise it up. Now, if you're going to do that, keep in mind, if you want your animal to be well behaved, if you want them to follow you, if you want them to stay, you know, tame, um, there's only so tame that you can get a goose. Okay, they're always going to be a goose. Um, you're literally going to have to spend, um, well, non-stop at very minimum the first like week with them i mean day and night like they need to sleep where they can see you um you need to hold them and carry them with you all day long let them follow you all day long i mean if you go into the store you gotta bring them if you go into the bathroom you gotta bring them if you're going to take a shower guess what goose has got to got to be able to see you you know if you're going to take a bath goose got to be able to see you goslings are insanely attached if they're left alone in nature um they panic, and, and they do so in captivity too, especially if they're imprinted on an adult, um, on, on someone like the human, which is what you want if you're raising a goose, and uh, they're left by themselves, they panic because in nature it means death. So every time you leave your gosling behind, that baby's going through a horrible anxiety attack and panicking, and that's why they scream for you and yell for you. And it is a very exhausting job because they will look for you in the middle of the night. They may sleep in your bed. If they do so, again, not potty trained. So, you know, you're kind of dealing with a lot of stuff you got to figure out, right? And you want to really have them with you all the time. And I mean, this is not just the first week. This is like nonstop the first week, nonstop. And then after that, there's an additional seven weeks at very minimum. You got to still take them with you everywhere, okay? While they're babies, they need to follow you. They need to be with you. They are terrified on their own, okay? And if you don't keep up with that, they're not going to be able to trust you. They're not going to be able to build that bond with you. So whether you hatch them and you're the first thing they see, or whether you get them as a baby gosling, in both cases, the first three days are vital. Nonstop. Be together, okay? The first week, insanely important. And the first eight weeks of their lives are 